Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the Professor, and this is the Moment of Truth. April is New Black Media Appreciation Month. April is an important month because it's the beginning of the spring, the beginning of new things. The long, cold winter is over, and now the warmth and life returns to the earth. A rebirth ritual occurs every single year, and we should draw inspiration from that. Now, before we go any further, whenever I or anyone else in the New Black Media says the New Black Media, we're talking about you. We may be the mouthpieces for it, but you're part of this too. In fact, you're the foundation of it all. Without you, we don't exist. And this ritual that we perform of giving recognition to our media, that's important because, like our holy days, it's an act of self-determination. When you determine something for yourself, then you decide when and where it happens. Nobody can assign our media recognition to the shortest and coldest month of the year. And I'm not entirely sure who it was who decided that April would be the month that we observe this, but the point is, this was the month that the people picked. We didn't need the white government or any old, crumbling, and corrupt fossils from the civil rights era to try to hand this to us. We did it for ourselves. And there is an undeniable legitimacy about that, a legitimacy that there is no substitute for. Now, for those of us who are behind the microphones, we have a duty to make sure that what we are doing edifies and promotes the interests of our people. I, in particular, try to drop some little pearls of wisdom. I put wisdom in quotes. Things like the number of sayings that I've coined in the last 16 years, such as, when white supremacy is done with its tools, it breaks its tools. I came up with that one. Another one is, a media is defined by who owns it and whose interest it operates in. Another yet, the white media isn't in the business of entertainment, they're in the business of mind control. I'm not a big fan of slogans necessarily, but repetition is the mother of learning, so in that sense, slogans can help people to pick and remember important points. And when you see the things that we talk about happen, you remember these kind of little witticisms that we put out there. It helps you to internalize the lessons so that it becomes a part of you. Now, another thing. As the black media, we pride ourselves on giving you tomorrow's headlines today. That was why I coined the phrase that a media is useless if it can't tell you what's going to happen until after it already occurs. You need a media that keeps you ahead of the curve, not one that's struggling to keep up, or another that just decides that it doesn't need to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow today anyway. For example, as you already know, South Africa took Israel before the International Court of Justice, which shouldn't be confused with the International Criminal Court. Those are two different things. The International Criminal Court is the Hague. Everyone knows it is the ICC. The ICJ, on the other hand, is far lesser known. But since it's South Africa who brought the genocide accusation against Israel, people are pointing out how the Israelis supported the apartheid regime for decades back in the 20th century, and that this is part of what motivated South Africa's black government to bring these charges against Israel. But you didn't have to wait until this year for the white media to give you a few minor details about the incestuous relationship between Israel and apartheid South Africa. I told you about the Israeli-born Hollywood movie mogul Arnon Milshan in the past. But this last summer, I decided to do a bit of a deep dive into how this movie producer was also an agent of the Israeli government and how in the 1970s he helped Israel support the apartheid regime in South Africa and build their nuclear arsenal. Now that deep dive video, that was posted several months ago, and I've actually mentioned Arnon Milshan long before that. Well, the white media is finally getting around to telling you about him. By the way, on a side note, Arnon Milshan is not the only Israeli guy who got into the movie business. For those of you who are Gen Xers or early millennials, you'll probably remember that there was a production company back in the day called Golan Globus Productions. The name came from the two men who were behind it, Menachem Golem and Yoram Globus. They produced a lot of movies in the 1980s, a lot of them were Chuck Norris movies such as Missing in Action, Invasion USA, and Delta Force. These guys were Israelis, they were not Americans. And more recently, you've had Gideon Raff. He's an Israeli TV producer who made a show in Israel called Prisoners of War. That show would be adopted into an American version called Homeland. I bring that up because if you look at the names and see who's behind it, you probably notice that a lot of the movies that people have been seeing for the last 40 years that have in particular have been showing the Arabs as basically an existential threat to the United States, etc., you look and see who the people are who actually produced and you realize these are not even Americans who are putting this stuff out. Now, the white media doesn't tell you about that. They don't connect the dots like that. 
And that's why you need the black media, or rather you need those of us who are the mouthpieces for the black media. I also told you back in November that the United States launching missiles at the Houthis in Yemen was actually meant as a way to engineer a larger conflict with Iran. And now, months later, the white media is just now catching up. You've seen the United States going hog wild with their missile strikes on Yemen. See, you can't afford to be behind the curve. Everybody's talking about the issue now, but if you follow the black media, you already knew about this months ago. It's like that movie Wall Street. Gordon Gecko wasn't impressed by Charlie Sheen's tidbits about this or that company because Gecko already had insider information. Or, as Gordon Gecko put it, tell me something I don't know. As the black media, that's our job. Now, a video about Arnon Milshan or the Houthi rebels trading missile strikes with the U.S. may not be as entertaining as, say, a video about rappers beefing. But as you've seen in the last few months, the stories that I keep bringing to you are the ones that you need to be paying attention to, because those are the ones that blow up into bigger ones later on. And no, I don't do videos about, say, Yemen or about Arnon Milshan every single day hammering the point relentlessly, but as the black media, we give you credit for having an IQ higher than your shoe size. We also require those who listen to us to pay attention. Intelligent people shouldn't need things to be told to them 10 times in a row in order for them to understand that it's important. When I do a video about AIPAC, the Israeli lobbying group attacking black politicians, and then weeks later Israel gets into a war with Hamas, and you see Juliana Margulies and Michael Rappaport singling out black people to attack, you need to understand how A led to B and B to C and so on. When I tell you about documentaries like The Lobby USA, it's not because I think it's only of interest to me. It's because that documentary actually showed precisely how these phony front groups operate and who's behind them. Everyone else ignores these things. But as black people, as the black media, we shouldn't. A lot of you in the comments and elsewhere wonder why I cover what on the surface may seem to be specious or otherwise irrelevant topics. I cover things like that missile attack in Yemen and explain that the U.S. was manufacturing another Gulf of Tonkin incident. I explained how the Gulf of Tonkin incident was what initiated the Vietnam War, and that it was all based on a lie. And then months later, the white media tells you about the very thing I informed you of months earlier. Except they didn't connect the dots for you. They don't explain that this is exactly how the Vietnam War started. But without that crucial context, without the history behind the headlines, they can fool you into thinking that this is just another military adventure, when in reality, it's another quagmire in the making. This is not about tooting my own horn. This is about helping you to understand that as the black media, we are your early warning system. The things I tell you about are not gossip or hip-hop news or who's beefing with whom. It's not the kind of low-IQ ghetto fare that too many black people have been conditioned to want. You have to upgrade your tastes in media, start craving information, and not infotainment. Whenever you have a white media outlet that feeds you all of this garbage, what they're doing is they're dumbing you down. They're making you completely and thoroughly ignorant. And what do you call a creature that's ignorant, that only cares about the moment and has no idea of the future? You call that an animal. It tells me a lot when videos that are warning you about the threats looming against us get far less views and engagement than videos about some stupid celebrity or what I consider to be far less pressing news. As black people, we deserve to have news and analysis that is every bit as good as the dominant societies. In fact, as black people, we need news and analysis that is better than the dominant society. Forewarned is forearmed. Any media worth its name is supposed to tell you what's coming before it gets here. This is an essential part of building up black people's confidence with one another. The main reason that a lot of us defer to white media or don't put much stock in what black people tell us is because we believe these non-black outlets are more accurate. As black media, we understand that it's our duty to establish a track record that shows when you listen to us, you're not merely up to date, you're ahead of the curve. And that's the reason why we have Black Media Appreciation Month. If you wait for MSNBC or CNN to tell you something, you'll always be late because their job is to support established white power, and that means they won't tell you what's really going on until it's too late. That way you can be properly led around by the nose. They're not in the business of thwarting white power schemes and plans. They're in the business of promoting and protecting white power schemes and plans. So the Young Turks and CNN and everyone else are pulling up the rear. We don't do kundalini crackpot nonsense. We don't do any EBT-based media. 
Over here, we know that knowledge is power, and it's our job to arm our people with information and to make sure you have the edge by reading the tea leaves accurately and telling you what's coming long before it gets here. Here's a fun fact. Did you know that billionaire businessmen have people on their staffs whose job it is to keep them informed? When I say that, I mean that some of them, like, say, Vince McMahon, when they encounter some business subject or some person of interest that the boss is unfamiliar with, their staffs will actually put together a video package for the boss to watch. And this video will explain in broad strokes what the particular subject is so the boss is brought up to date. That actually happens, by the way. See, this is a large part of why I describe my Moment of Truth videos as your morning briefing. The enemy has people who make it their business to keep the perpetrators and beneficiaries of white supremacy informed. You need an equalizer. Black people working to keep you informed. Those of you who listen to me and the other new voices of black media, you've got the inside track. You're like Gordon Gecko, with people feeding you insider information. So while everyone else is getting the facts several months later, and even then not understanding what it means, you already knew about this stuff months and months ago and you know exactly what it really means. That's a media that operates in your interest. You don't see any of the corrupt and crumbling old dead black media doing this. They're all trying to get money from white corporations. They're trying to get invited to the white cheese and croissant parties. So the old dead black media is too stupid to follow the real stories, and they're too deeply invested in maintaining white power that they wouldn't tell you the truth even if they knew it. We keep you on code and ahead of the curve. And you keep us honest. We exist because you demanded it. We are the personification of black by popular demand. And as black people, we should demand no less. We don't represent a new consciousness brought into the world. We represent the return of the old one, the one that works. We don't represent a cultural revolution. We represent a cultural restoration. The people who are going to finally purge all of this ghetto gossip and hip-hop beefing nonsense. This is the age of information. It won't keep you entertained, but it will keep you in the driver's seat. I, for one, consider myself to be privileged beyond words that after over a decade and a half, you still have people who are here and more join you every day. With the black media, we would never represent millions and millions of views because black empowerment, truth be told, is not all that popular, sadly, even among black people. But then again, our entire mission has been to gather that critical mass that chosen few, the ones who are going to get the job done. As all of us are only too well aware, it is never the masses who are the ones who actually do what needs to be done. Most of the masses are sheep, and they will follow whomever seems to be the strongest or the most charismatic or the cutest shepherd. It's always been that critical mass, that chosen few. They're the ones who are the fulcrum upon which history turns. I am honored to the point that I don't even know how to properly put it into words, that the trust and faith that you have decided to put in myself and the other new voices of black media, there is no law that says that a black media has to exist. There is no law that says that a black media has to operate in your interest. This is part of our self-determination. We decided that this is what's going to happen. You decided that a black media would exist. And you also decided to choose people who actually represented your interests, people who actually spoke to the reality as you know it to be. So during this month, let this be the time that we rededicate ourselves to the principles of black empowerment. And those of us who are the mouthpieces, the thought leaders for this black media, we also rededicate our efforts to you. We're not backing down, we're doubling down. And we're also making sure to burn the midnight oil. We're keeping our eyes open and keeping our ear to the ground, trying to find out what's going on because you need to know. I am proud of the effort that I've put in. I am proud of the things that I've been able to accomplish in my time doing this. I'm proud of the light that I've been able to bring to issues that I know are important. But most of all, I'm proud of you. You are the validation and the verification of everything that we've been saying. There's been an appetite for exactly this kind of intelligent black fare. When I look back at how the landscape was basically one gigantic dumpster fire 15 plus years ago, and then look at where we are now, how far we've come. And while it's true that we do yet have a long way to go, it's also true that we have actually begun the journey. We're not going to get there immediately. We're not going to get there in a few days. We didn't get into this mess overnight. We're not getting out of it overnight. But your involvement... Your dedication, that is the proof that we are going to get out of it. 
and I'm privileged that you have allowed me to be a part of it. You allowed me to be here for 15 plus years. If it wasn't for you, I'd be one of these anonymous, irrelevant, kundalini energy clowns who nobody ever heard of. One of those babbling mouthpieces, however erudite I might seem, I would also be irrelevant without you. You're the ones who decide who matters and who doesn't. So I hope that you'll take a bow. You've certainly earned it. And as for myself and the other new voices of black media, I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say we're going to continue doing the work that you have set us to do. Because it's necessary, because it is required, and because thanks to you, this is who we are. And by we, I mean all of us. Good day, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Charlie, Jerlene Harris, Morris Bodden, Suleiman Alaji, and Kenneth Presha. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Now more than ever, the black media only exists because of you.